Hi guys. Hey everybody, we are so glad to see you again. We're one more day closer to Easter. How many days away is Easter, Henry? Two days. Two days, I can't believe it. Everybody say two days. It's Good Friday today. Today is the day that Jesus actually died on the cross. I hope you and your families tune in to our online Good Friday service tonight at Coram Deo Bible Church. It will be a somber time of reflection and remembrance as we ponder the death of Jesus on the cross. But Sunday's coming, isn't it? Today is day 10 out of 12 of our Resurrection Egg devotional series. Yesterday we learned that the soldiers played a game gambling for Jesus' clothes as they waited for him to die. And then to make sure he was dead, a soldier pierced Jesus' side with a spear. Jesus was dead. Say that with me. Jesus, Jesus was dead. dead. Think about that for a minute. Jesus was dead. He died for you, for me, for the sins of the whole world. He was innocent, but he suffered so much for us. Today we're going to continue by reading God's word like we always do, because there's not a better place to start than by hearing what God has to say to us. I will be reading from Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 through 60. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. What was that guy's name, Henry? Uh, the disciple of Jesus who, who got the tomb. What was his name? Joseph. Joseph, that's right. So these verses are talking about after Jesus died. Someone had to do something with Jesus' body. A rich man named Joseph, who loved Jesus very much, took his body and put it in a tomb. Tombs were for rich people back then. Poor people couldn't afford a fancy grave like that. But Joseph of Arimathea gave Jesus his own tomb he had bought, so Jesus would have a grave that gave him honor and respect. We're going to open the light blue egg today. Henry, what do you find inside that egg? A cloth. Can you hold that up? Yeah, a, a tiny piece of cloth. Does anyone have a guess of what cloth has to do with the Easter story? You have a guess? Mm -hmm. Not yet? Mm -mm. Well, after Jesus died, the man named Joseph asked if he could bury him. So this was a brave and loving thing for Joseph to do. Remember that the men who killed Jesus did not believe he was the Son of God. But Joseph did believe, and he wanted Jesus to have a proper burial. Joseph knew that this might get him in trouble with the soldiers, but he was brave and he asked for permission anyway. Joseph wrapped the body of Jesus in what? Cloth. In cloth, that's right. And he buried him in a tomb cut out of a rock like a shallow cave. Joseph then went away sad because Jesus was dead, wondering what would happen next. Let's pick up where we left off in Benjamin's box yesterday. So if you remember, Benjamin had seen the soldiers gambling for Jesus' clothes. And he wondered why God had allowed Jesus to die. So let's see what happens today. We're going to be reading page 29, The Cloth. Benjamin, called Eli the next morning, come hear the news. Benjamin stuck his head out the window and rubbed his sleepy eyes. Do you have sleepy eyes ever? Yes. yes. <laughs> they posted guards at Jesus' tomb, explained Eli. Some say Jesus will return to life. Benjamin perked up. My grandfather told me that Jesus brought some people back from the dead. Wouldn't that be awesome to see yeah. that? Maybe it will happen again, said Eli. But the soldiers say they're making sure people don't steal the body. Quickly, Benjamin dressed and raced to the tomb. 
Could it be? Could Jesus have returned to life? Oh, how he hoped so. But the huge stone remained in place, and the guards blocked the tomb. With dark, scowling faces, they told him to leave at once. Benjamin walked slowly down the hill, and he noticed a bit of white cloth hanging from a small branch. He plucked it off and rubbed it between his fingers. His parents wove cloth like this for burials. Jesus is dead, he told himself as he continued toward home. That night, he sadly placed the cloth in his box. This would surely be the last thing to remember his friend by. He tried to pray, but no words came. He wondered if God even listened. Oh man, that's our story for today. Benjamin still doesn't know who Jesus really is, does he? Yeah. He's so sad because he doesn't know what we know. And what do we know? That Jesus will rise again. That's exactly right. And this is all part of God's plan. Two more days till Jesus rises from the dead. I cannot wait for Easter Sunday. Sunday's coming. Everyone say, Sunday's, Sunday's coming. coming. That's right, parents. Tomorrow we will continue with the pink egg. I also wanted to let you know about an idea for Good Friday. Henry and I and Violet are going to make a very easy recipe for communion bread. The recipe is linked under our Coram Deo Kids digital resources page on our website. This will be something that you could consider partaking in with your family. Take communion together during our Good Friday service tonight. If you're unsure about who can celebrate communion, Check out the video link in this post, which can give you lots of good information. I'll see you tomorrow as we continue learning about the true story of Easter. Don't forget to say, He is risen! He is risen indeed! That's right. We'll see you guys tomorrow.